Zarja is another way of saying that you're going to do some thinking by means of metonymies. Metonymies are things that split apart along fault lines so that a part A can connect to a part B of another signifier and that part B can connect to part A in another signifier and so on and so on until there is a sense of circularity. This is what Freud called parapraxis, but it's also the ancient logic of divination, where a sacrifice would focus on the simultaneity of multiple layered sources of signifiers and, in effect, drill a hole through the layers to create a focused beam that, out of the contingency of the layers sliding past each other, would create a magical fixed line. In this Zarja, I will use the idea of the camera obscura, which was in some cases constructed to create a literal fixed line that identified a meridian tracking the travel of light, usually the sun or moon, but also other celestial bodies. The camera obscura made light pivot and invert, and I used the idea of inversion to reveal key factors belonging to the zajas in general, but not often evident. The camera obscura also allows us to compare the model of the system of humors, along with its narrative components, to the idea that thought is really about extension, or as Freud said, psyche is extended, and I would push that to say that psyche is extension itself. The stereogram is a pattern slightly out of sync, so that when you look at the small differences, they create 3D effects. The image that pops into space is inside Euclidean space, which has to be neutralized by unfocusing your eyes and looking past the pattern. In other words, you neutralize the parallax of Euclidean space with all of its anxiety implications and enter into a new focused anxiety that is based on a new kind of geometry. With the camera obscura comparison, we can compare this transformation of anxiety to melancholy and bring in the theme of endurance, the part of the humoristic system where not only spatiality but temporality is negated. This is extremely important in architecture, particularly in situations or projects such as Gordon Matta Clark's, where architecture is taken apart to demonstrate that space-time itself can be taken apart. The linguistic counterparts to this architectural deconstruction is the contronym. Its mathematical counterpart is the palindrome, evident clearly in the ideas surrounding the numbers 1 and 9. This is not a novel idea. The relevance of the camera obscura has been made since antiquity in two key examples. The Cyclops episode from Homer's Odyssey, where a dark chamber is used as a prison, deploying the theme of paralysis, and where the contronymic hostes word is brought into focus as both hospitable and hostile. The takeaway here is the placement of these dark rooms within larger literary and philosophical projects, how they serve as models of the whole, and specifically as metonymies. The model of the humors has to be twisted at the point of white bile and black bile, death and the underworld. The logical model was based on combining the distinctions between hot and cold and wet and dry. This fit the pattern of seasons for the Mediterranean climate of Greece, but it threw the cycle of a heroic narrative out of sync because the sanguine position of birth and phlegmatic position of death constructed an upper zone of performative sequences related to birth, life, and death of the hero. Just as satire and farce were separated from the serious dramatic forms of comedy and tragedy, the rise and the fall of the hero, the winter of melancholy, associated with Hades and the wandering of the soul between death and rebirth, had to be positioned in counterpart to the mimetic upper half of the model. If we ask what happens at each position of this model, it becomes clear that melancholy is both the limit of the performative system, but also its center, in the same way that Empedocles determined that the center of the earth was made by intersecting shadows taken at the same time in Syene and Alexandria. 
This experiment also demonstrated how the camera obscura idea could become the basis of experimental scientific geometry and geography. With a switch between white and black bile, melancholy and collar fall on a dry line perpendicular to the wet line that separates off the metonymic chains that we associate with mimetic drama narratives. They are the parapraxies that result after the suppression of a signifier that then works as a latent signifier, an unknown X. We can apply some of the terms from the new set of critical terms I've outlined earlier. The wet line becomes the cathesis connecting the opposite positions of birth and death. Conatus becomes the dry line connecting color and melancholy. This cross of wet and dry lines is also indicated by Dürer in his famous engraving Melancholia I, where the artist intentionally misspells melancholy to create an anagram, Limon Cella, the gate of heaven. We should also note that Cella means both heaven and wedge, a plenum and the instrument used to make a catagraphic cut into the plenum. My diagram shows this almost literally, as a pyramid cutting into the performative arc above the wet line. The camera obscura shows how stereograms work to create the space inside the Euclidean or parallax space by relaxing focus and replacing one form of parallax with another. The new parallax reverses the order of the performative upper story of the model, but it does this to discover a basis that is both material and ideal, an eigenvector or perfect shadow, where a new space emerges from inside our perspectival experience. We need a reality check on all this revisionism, and Pappus of Alexandria provided a good one in 300 AD when he discovered a form of geometry that was logically prior to Euclid. This also found a space inside of space. We even get a humoristic model variation here, with an upper line order mirrored by a lower line to form a set of crisscrosses that make a meridian line. This is just like the camera obscuras in several European cathedrals, where you can find lines marking the passage of the sun and critical dates of the calendar year. No one has compared Pappus's theorem to the architecture of the camera obscura, but once we do this, we get architecture and the theory of humors combined into one package. The camera obscura creates what we might call the perfect shadow, which we can demonstrate mathematically with numbers that produce constants when reversed and subtracted, and then added back to themselves, as in the famous case of 1089. Just as 1089 is the result of subtracting a number from itself, reversing the result, then adding it back again, Dessargues' theorem is about the way our point of view position in perceptual space is a subtraction of a shadow behind the face of visible objects, which we can then add back in the form of a triangle positioned at any angle, as long as it matches the profile of the front triangle. The edges will cross, all on the same line, just as the lines connecting the points on Pappus's theorem did. Two models, two kinds of camera obscuras, two variations on the system of humors were their own camera obscura, the dark room of melancholy. The clever installation art of Tim Noble and Sue Webster flashes a focused light across a pile of what looks like random trash onto a wall behind to create an unlikely silhouette. Isn't this clever that Noble and Webster actually duplicate this ARG's experiment by constructing the perfect profile that looks random from one direction but is perfectly formed in another direction? The single shadow of the trash pile suggests the ideal situation where light beams from other key directions would produce different, equally telling shadows, a kind of stereogrammatical compass. Since every visible object implies a trip necessary to see it from all sides, the 360 degrees is implied by anything visible, and the profile we get at each fixed position would be completed by a super profile, 
always split into two parts, which we label the tessera, where the visible meets the invisible. As another reality check, we find that popular culture has not neglected this idea. Krzysztof Kozlowski's film, The Double Life of Veronique, tells the story of two women born separately, one in France, the other in Poland, with the same name but opposite fates. Both are musicians, but the Polish singer Veronika dies young of a heart attack. The French Veronique, somehow sensing her twin's death, suddenly gives up her piano studies. In a key scene, the director shows Veronique looking through a plastic ball that inverts things visually, and we know that the director has understood the implications of the dark room, the camera obscura, and its relation to melancholy. Here we have enough evidence to go further with our idea that psyche is not just extended, it's extension itself.